because you could do it for the city or the county. In Flint, we going to pay both taxes if somebody fumbled the ball. We would have had to get twenty to 40000 So we choose to do it with the 8000 and we ask for your help. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Gregory Eason. Mr. Eason. Our next, speaker. Our next speaker is Mrs. Carolyn Shannon. Ms. Shannon. Uh, Mr. President, how many more speaker slips do we have? One. One more speaker slip. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Carolyn. Good evening, Mr. President. Scott Kincaid, and to the Honorable Council, and to the Honorable City Clerk, Inez Brown, whom I am very proud of. We have a new challenge, and I think the, the new council with the old council is up to the job. I think we're going to have great things coming to Flint, and I want to congratulate all of you because I cannot navigate without God. I will not make a move without God. I know you're supposed to separate state and church, but I wasn't born that way. I was born to believe in God. And I believe in all the things that I was taught when I was a child. And I want to let you know, someone mentioned racism. Racism comes from the heart. Racism is taught. But I wasn't taught racism in my family. My great-grandmother was a Blackfoot tribe. They were an aggressive tribe, and they moved on to Canada. My other great-grandparents was Colonel Mac McAllister and Colonel Macmillan. So what I'm trying to say to you, I do not believe in racism. But I'm going to cut to the chase. One of my friends sold her house in Flint and moved to Grand Blanc. It is more expensive to live in the city of Flint than it is Grand Blanc, Clio, Ohio, uh, Flushing, and other surrounding little suburban areas. So what I'm thinking, since I believe in God and I'm not going to separate state from church, I'm believing if I don't get a refund from the city of Flint from my water bill, I will be leaving. The only thing that's keeping me here in Flint is my parish. And I'll let you know. It's a lot of good people, prominent people, that have left the city of Flint and enjoying their lives and writing books. But water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. I learned that when I was a very little girl. What I'm saying to you, this council, work together. You must never be above the people you serve. I just don't believe in racism because whatever make up your background, whatever is in your genes, that's what you are. You are, each and every one of you are special 
because God made you that way. And if he called you for this job, you must do it to the best of your ability. And first of all, you must implement checks and balances. Amen. Balances and checks. Amen. Whatever goes on in this city must be checked. It must be a balance. Amen. We cannot afford to let anything go by anymore. Amen. We cannot let anyone take anything else from us without fighting for it. And I'm going to sit down because I know it's very late. But I'd like to say this to any felon. I believe in second chances. I believe in third chances. This felon wasn't made for everybody. But it was made for you. You and you and you and you and you and you and me. So what we have to do in the future is find out how we can erase these felons without paying an astronomical amount of money. And I want you to work on, I've paid since January over $2,000 on my water bill. And I want you to work on getting me a refund because it's not in my power to tell you I'm not using that much water. One bill was $411.06. The other bill was, the next bill in the next month was $66. I don't know what your calculations is. I can't count that very well, but I know I'm not using that much water. Carolyn, will you please sum up? Okay. I want to let you know, I believe in second chances and third chances. So whatever God tell you to do, you're going to have to do it sooner or later. But I would like to say this to Mrs. Jackie Popular, Councilperson Jackie Popular. I was at McDonald's to a party she had for children. For some reason, she gave me a picture of two children that look like me. So she is in the city doing work. And I suggest that each one of you do work in your community. And I'm going to say this about Mr. Mays. He might not sit, be sitting frozen, but he has the knowledge and I knew someday God would give him his chance. But I want him to conduct himself in the manner in which God would be pleased. And I thank you very much. And I congratulate your new people. And you have my respect. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> Mr. President. Yeah, Mr. Mays. Ms. Shannon, I always appreciate you, and you always treat council and people up here. You, you're famous in my mind for calling anybody and every person honorable. I heard your cry about the water rates. You are in the seventh ward, but you've always supported me, and even to the point where I know how much and the things that you've done. So water bills and two thousand dollars in a certain amount of time i had a couple of them during the election and i knew of one that we dealt with that went from 400 we got it down to 179 and it was some ways that it was done mr neely in my mind was the first pioneer in the water thing and it tripped me out because when I went to help this person who called me they had your blue card Councilman Neely in the city system and pulled it out and showed. So between Councilwoman Galloway who is your official person the knowledge Councilman Neely has helped bestow on me and as a friend 
I believe we need to review your bills and or your six month history, but I won't do it formally, but I can assure you that if it's something we can look at that we have knowledge about, because I've had my wild off. And so believe me, I ain't a big shot. I'm gonna look out for the least of them because I know it's the right thing to do. We hear your cry. We'll talk to you privately. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our last speaker is Mr. Paul Herring. Mr. Herring. Good evening, Paul. Good evening, Council. You know, I usually end with this, but I want to start with this because I've got some things I need to say. It's so my favorite quote. It's Booker T. Washington, and he says, in all things purely social, we can be as separate as the fingers. Yet we have to be one, like the hand, in all things beneficial to our mutual progress. Amen. Okay? And when we talk about jobs, we're talking about our mutual progress. When we're talking about education, we're talking about our mutual progress. When we're talking about working together as a cohesive body, as a community, as politicians, we're talking about things that are beneficial to our mutual progress. Donna Popular got up here and talked about the Flint Journal, and she talked about the Flint Journal like a dog, and we all need to do that. Hmm. It is deplorable what they have done to this community and that we will let them do that. We need to throw Channel 12, Channel 25, and Channel 5 under the bus as well. You see, we, we or let me say me, I have unique perspective here. For the last 12 years, I've been presenting the city council meetings to the citizens of Flint unedited, uncut, so that they can see what's going on here even if they can't get down here. It's a service that I provided at my own expense and at yours at some times. You know, Brother Mays, you're throwing out demotions in those referrals. Why don't you make a referral to Brother Early to reinstate my contracts, okay, to make it possible for me to cover these meetings and more, all right? I love to hear that, okay? We need to take control of our image. We cannot allow the Channel 12s and the Channel 5s to dictate who we are. And the young man that came from the, uh, the union and asked you to stop talking to the TV stations, could you imagine how powerful that would be? Could you imagine how powerful it would be if 10 or 20 people called SCAF and said, don't let me see another commercial on the news? You know how powerful it would be if 20 or 30 people called Patsy Lou and said you better not put another commercial on the news, or we're not coming to buy cars from you. Maybe that's a little extreme. Maybe that's the second step. Maybe the first step is calling over and talking to the station manager Amen. and threatening it. Amen. Maybe that's the first step. Maybe the first step is sitting down with the editor at the Flint Journal and saying no more. Amen. No more. And hold them to it. We're 100,000 strong. Even if we have 10,000 criminals in the city of Flint, 10,000 of us are doing wrong. There's still 999,000 of us that aren't. Amen. 